We're so dependent on the spy brick iPhone and Android. Have you ever thought about what would happen in an emergency when the power's down, the cell towers are out, and there is no internet? In this video, I will talk about UHF and VHF radios that you can use when the grid is down. Coming up. This device in my hand is a ham radio or amateur radio. It's a bow thing. It's a very popular handheld transceiver that can access ham frequencies in the 70 centimeter and 2 meter bands. Probably most ham radio operators have at least one of these. It can also access police, fire, marine radio, NOAA weather, FM radio, and other channels for personal use, which include FRS and GMRS bands. This kind of radio requires no internet. It can be charged by solar power, and it has a very long range through the use of repeaters. This one is pretty inexpensive. Depending on the model, they can be found at around $25 or so. This particular one is $62 because of the extra power. However, because this radio is high powered and can access the ham bands, it's not really legal for use by a person without an amateur radio license. Getting a ham license requires passing a test and there are three levels of licenses you can get. You need at least the technician license to transmit in the ham bands on this radio. I'm a licensed ham myself. These are another set of radios that intersect with the frequencies of the ham radio right here. This, this guys, these are limited to FRS and GMRS bands, the walkie talkie range. They're really only useful for very short distances. You'd be lucky to get them to work past a quarter of a mile. The reason is that most of these are limited to one half watt and line of sight and they don't handle obstructions very well. In contrast, the ham radio here can go up to 5 or 8 watts depending on the model and it's strong enough to reach a repeater. I'll tell you about repeaters later. FRS radios such as the ones reached by this kind of device, the walkie-talkie frequency are so limited, they can't really disrupt much of the airwaves due to their low power and small antennas. Look at the size of the antenna here. GMRS radios, which this is actually an FRS GMRS radio, can be sold with more power, but it also requires a license. It's easy though, just pay $70 for 10 years and your entire family can access GMRS. So GMRS is a licensed family band. I also have a GMRS license and I've had it for 10 years. What's unique about GMRS and ham bands is that they can use repeaters. Repeaters are able to retransmit your signal so it can extend to a larger area. For example, my ham radio here can talk to people easily in a hundred mile radius and sometimes more. I have regularly used repeaters that are 40 miles away. You can check if there are repeaters in your area for the 70 centimeter band and the 2 meter band for ham radio as well as the GMRS band. Typically repeaters are on mountains or tops of buildings. In an emergency, this is quite useful since you will feel connected instead of being completely dependent on the internet which can easily go down. So both GMRS and ham radios have the ability to use repeaters and both require a license. However, GMRS has no test, so you can get a license immediately. Just go to the FCC website, I have the link in the video, and you can sign up the same day. Typically, I would expect that most families will not have the desire to take a ham license test as a group. It does require a lot of study. Study of electronics, radio waves, and memorizing frequency ranges. 
That's why the best approach is actually a combination of one family member getting a ham license and then getting a GMRS license so that the entire family can talk on GMRS. And then the ham radio operator can reach the larger world through ham radio. A ham license operator also has flexibility because a licensed ham can use an uncertified FCC device. In fact, ham operators can build their own. They don't need FCC certification as long as they stick to the rules for ham operators. So there's no problem for a ham operator using this kind of radio if this one is uncertified. And there are several Baofengs that are not certified. That's why there's a test because they give you a lot of responsibility as a ham operator. But this opens up the safety for a family by having a means of communicating without relying on an infrastructure that is centrally controlled and can easily be shut down as the grid is shut down. There have been many cases in California where emergencies of this sort are common. Recently, the massive fires took out power in a lot of areas and an entire town, like Paradise, was burned. Cell phones would be a useless brick. The nice thing about ham radio and GMRS is that although you have to identify yourself with a call sign, it's not a place where all of your movements are monitored in a database. So it's still one of the safest methods of communicating for those with nothing to hide. So it's something that you can use every day, not just for emergencies. But usefulness may vary depending on your topology. Hilly areas or dense urban areas really need to use a repeater. Now you can get more sophisticated with additional antennas. Here I have a car, car magnetic mount antenna. This is a Nagoya. And here's one with a uh, cigarette lighter power supply. So I can put it in my car and not have to run out of batteries. This can keep you entertained on long trips. A lot of people use these radios while driving. It's actually the busiest time of day for ham and GMRS radio. So let me summarize again. This kinds of radios are called blister pack radios because they're sold at Walmart and Target in blister packs are fairly useless for emergencies. Their only suitability is for use as an in-house intercom. If you do not have a ham license, you can program these Baofengs right here to limit itself to GMRS frequencies. You just need a computer cable and a computer. I'll put a link in the description to an approved USB cable. But there's the question of legality since some of these are not officially approved by the FCC. Anyway, check out each model to see if it's FCC approved if you have no ham license. Ham operators don't need to worry about that. They can use anything. It's better to have a ham license for at least one member of the family. There are many ham repeaters and contact is more guaranteed. GMRS is hit or miss with repeaters depending on the area. Outside of use for emergencies, ham radio and even GMRS is a fun hobby. You can make friends on the airwaves with similarly minded people. I have found that most ham people are aware of the dangers of the if you want to do a good job of using these devices though, I really recommend getting a programming cable since they are difficult to program by hand. And by the way, mine has a custom antenna that's a little longer. They're also fun for monitoring police, channels, NOAA, the fire department, and just people talking in various bands. There's no license required to just listen. But better to get licensed, you can join in the fun. Have fun with these radios. They're safer than Facebook, and you can actually talk to real people. Hey, if you enjoy my content, it would be great if you subscribed. That's really important for us YouTubers. And smash that notification bell so you can get notifications of new videos.